beer that's $190 a bottle, how to split an apple with your bare hands, and finger biscuits. Yeah, that's right. Finger biscuits. This is the food feeder. Well, it's the day after Thanksgiving, and I'm curious to know if any of you guys tried out my mom's apple pie recipe from last week's show. If you did, you're welcome. Or I'm sorry, depending on how it turned out. Our comment of the week goes to Comrade Alfarius, who tells us that his mom is mean to him, and he does not like the skinny f***er on the screen talking to him. He's referring to me, and he's totally right, and so's his mom. Take that, Comrade Alfarius. Jerk. Thanksgiving may be over, but we can relive our favorite holiday with a new music video called It's Thanksgiving, brought to you by the calendar-based songwriting genius of the team that created Friday by Rebecca Black. Oh, 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 it's Thanksgiving. Right. We, we, we are gonna have a good time. The video already has a ton of dislikes, which is probably because she doesn't even realize she's singing into a turkey drumstick and not a microphone. What a doof! We, we are gonna have I came across another video this week of a guy teaching you how to split an apple open with your bare hands. I find this video to be incredibly frustrating because it's a pointless skill with no real value whatsoever, because I've got teeth, but also one that I cannot, for the life of me, get to work. But I did develop a new skill, which you'll be impressed to watch me do. It's called How to Bruise an Apple and Give Yourself Arthritis. Hey! Speaking of things I like to do with food and my hands, Finger biscuits. No, sorry, that's finger biscuits, not finger biscuits. I totally don't finger biscuits. A guy in Italy invented these, I guess, as an excuse to gorge yourself on Nutella without sticking your finger directly into the jar. And for those of you out there who were saying, hey, aren't those just finger condoms? To which I say, yes, but they're edible and don't protect against anything. It's Black Friday, so let's talk about Black Crown beer. You may think that's a sloppy segue, but that was also my nickname in high school. The Huffington Post is reporting that Budweiser is announcing a new higher alcohol beer that's gonna come out next year called Black Crown. The plan is to unveil this new ad campaign during the Super Bowl. Black Crown will be a golden amber lager, and it seems to me like kind of a way for them to whore in a little bit on the craft beer movement that's been happening across this country with all these sort of stronger and more interesting beers rising in sales. But Budweiser isn't the only company trying to class up their beer making operations. Samuel Adams has been making this beer called Utopius, which is a high alcohol brew that's been coming out every two years or so. With high end beer comes a high end price tag. Utopius retails for about $190 a bottle. It's a non carbonated dark beer that comes in at about 29% alcohol. It's also recommended to be drunk at room temperature. So while it is technically a beer, it sure doesn't act like one. And it is fascinating to me and I would love to try it, but personally, I don't feel a great need to drop 200 bucks on it. Would you guys be willing to shell out that much money for beer? Let us know in the comments below. It seems like just last week, we were talking about a brand new release of weird Pepsis in Japan. And it seems like that because that's exactly what happened. Pepsi's trying to release a new soda in Japan that has a chemical in it that prevents fat from being absorbed into your body. A spokesperson for Pepsi told the Daily Mail that it has a crisp, refreshing, and unique aftertaste. I wonder if unique is code for this is destroying my body from the inside. So they're making soda with fat blockers. They're gonna call it Pepsi Special, although maybe they should be calling it Pepsi Irony or Pepsi I'm never gonna buy that. Speaking of things I'm never going to buy, Taco Bell has released a new dessert menu. All the items are available for under a dollar, so now it's even more affordable to get diabetes. The best thing about Taco Bell's new dessert menu is that if the Doritos Tacos Locos didn't give you diarrhea, you get a second chance with their desserts. Since those last two food stories were a little frightening and depressing for me, I want to give you some positive food news on this one. Chef Jamie Oliver's popular UK magazine, Jamie, is coming to the US and it should be arriving sometime early next year. Some of you guys may not have even known that Jamie Oliver had a magazine in the UK, but word is it's pretty awesome, so I'm really excited to check it out. There's another great food and cooking resource on the way, thanks to legendary super chef Farron Adria, who is sort of the king of marrying science and art in the kitchen. Before he closed his iconic restaurant, El Bui, he and his staff created over 1,800 brand new dishes in less than a quarter century. Adria is taking all their hard work and research and using it to develop a massive, beautiful online resource called La Bouipedia. It's basically Wikipedia, but devoted entirely to really serious, badass cooking techniques. It's gonna be a pretty tremendous resource, 
but we're gonna have to wait a little while for it and it's not slated to launch until 2015. Still, it's pretty great that Audrey is taking all this tremendous information and making it available to everybody. Another day, another food recall. This time, a national recall of Nesquik. Yay! Now, one of Nesquik's ingredient suppliers issued their own recall first of calcium carbonate. Now, they've been sending this calcium carbonate to Nesquik, which led to their own recall of their chocolate powder. Now, take a wild guess as to what that possible contaminant might be. Everybody with me now? Salmonella! Nobody else said it. Salmonella seems to be everywhere these days, as highlighted by Fresh Express issuing another recall for their pre-washed spinach. It's their sixth recall for salad greens in the last 16 months. And this guy thinks that's six more than I want. Because I want zero. Zero is the number I'm looking for. Three of the recalls have been for possible salmonella contamination, while the other three were for possible listeria contamination. It's like a really terrible game of roulette. Fortunately, no illnesses have been reported yet. My theory is that everyone keeps buying spinach, planning to use it, and then just orders pizza. So don't take any chances. Check around your house. If you see any of these uh, recalled bags of spinach or Nesquik lying around, chuck them. Well guys, that's it for our show this week. You're probably a little hungover from Thanksgiving, but if you have any awesome ideas for leftover turkey sandwiches with gravy and potatoes and Brussels sprouts and bourbon or whatever, let us know in the comments section below. Oh, and follow me on Twitter, because some of you aren't doing that, and I can't believe it. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys next week, right here on The Food Feeder. Next time you're at a Mexican restaurant, order the Escamoles. In English, that's ant larva. Learn more on why would you eat that. Want to up the ante on classic fried chicken and mashed potatoes? Just add cheese curds. Smash an episode of Taste Explosions together with Epic Mealtime, and what do you get? An explosion of epic proportions. Join Top Chef Kevin Gillespie in sampling the wildest bacon-wrapped hot dogs with toppings like cream cheese, scallions, and everything bagel seeds. Beer made from bull balls and grown men's beards? Get a taste of our version of food news on Food Feeder. Watch Exotic Jess take on a live octopus in the appropriately named Why Would You Eat That Live Octopus Challenge. Subscribe for free for more tasted treats.